Let's talk a little bit about the concept of what truth is, how I refer to truth in all of my work. Because people have a real deeply mystified concept of what truth is or what it means, you know? They'll get into all these really deep abstract discussions of uh, the mind of God and, you know, uh, trying to get into like, you know, quantum theory and everything. This is mystification of the concept of the truth. And we have to demystify it. We have to bring it down to real simple, easy to understand language that anybody can comprehend. And then really completely delineate that from perception of any given thing. Because the two are not the same. When people say perception is reality, nothing could be farther from reality than that statement. Perception is not reality. Okay? It is just what it says. Perception. Seeing through. Perceive. To see through something. Like a lens or a filter. Okay? I perceive things differently without these glasses. That's one perception. When I put them on, I perceive things quite differently and more clearly. Okay? Well, that's how human perception works, like a lens. It's a filter. Okay? But what's there is the same thing. What's there is the same thing. All the change is how I perceived it. All right? So let's look at this concept. Truth is objective. That means that it's not dependent upon the perceptions of human beings. No one wants to hear that. That is, that is a direct assault, a direct frontal assault on the human ego. Because everybody wants to hear, my perceptions are important. And we want to also believe my perceptions are accurate. Okay? Now people will say, well, what makes you say your perception of this topic is going to be accurate? That's because I went through the process of having to admit over and over and over and over and over again endlessly how wrong I was about my former perceptions. I went through that destructive process of breaking down my former belief systems, of breaking down my former emotional patterns, of, uh, and of, of most of all changing my behavior. That's the thing that's the most destructive because we get attached to our behaviors and patterns. So asking people to change, I recognize it's not easy. It took me like probably probably about eight years of my life to do it. Most people don't want to spend a minute on creating personal change, let alone eight years. And you know, when I look at myself in all honesty, again, none of this is to sound egoic or to toot my own horn, but I look at it like I was a mild case of ego entrapment. A mild case compared to where I see other people at. I, I, I feel like I was the, uh, uh, you know, a very brittle stone that just needed to be hit with a chisel a few times and it broke into powder. You know, other people are hardened granite or diamond. You know, to break them down is going to take enormous effort and work. And most of them don't even want to do it. They're so calcified. You know, they're so, they've been so compressed into that hardened state that they don't even want to start. So I realize telling people your perceptions are not what really matters. You know, that the truth isn't based upon how you perceive things, that it's independent from your perceptions. Most people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Human beings' perceptions are capable of wavering. They can, they can waver slightly from the truth, and they can waver wildly from the truth. All right? What truth is, is that which does not waver. It doesn't move. It's that which is. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it. It doesn't matter whether anybody believes it. It doesn't matter whether anybody knows it. It doesn't matter whether anybody sees it. It doesn't matter whether anybody wants to see it. It's there. It's always been there. It's always going to be there. Nothing anybody does can change what has happened. Can anybody change what has already occurred in what we call, in, in the thinking of linear time, the past? Not one person here is capable of doing that. Let me tell you something. Not one being in the entire manifested universe is capable of doing that. Because that which has already occurred is set in the record of the universe. Nothing can change the past, ever. 
Great movie on this. Watch the new movie, The Time Machine. Not the original 50s version or 60s version. The new one. I think it came out in late 90s or early 2000s. Okay? This movie got crushed in reviews. Crushed. Whenever reviewers crush a movie and give it the worst ratings, go see that film. Because I guarantee you, there's very important allegorical concepts that you need to understand embedded in that film, and that's why the reviewers crush it, because they don't want you getting any ideas, you know? This movie got crushed in the theaters, and I'm telling you, it's one of the best films to understand the concept of the absolute impossibility of changing the past. The past cannot be altered. You know what can be altered? The future. That's what that movie's about. And you know where the alteration of the future begins? In the present moment. That's exactly right. That's the only place it begins. Okay? So what truth is, the demystified concept of truth, is it's simply that which already exists. It's that which has happened in the past and is happening in the present moment. The truth does not exist in the future. When we get to those future moments and it's the present, truth will be existent then but not until, okay? So there is no such thing as truth in the future. Truth is that which has occurred in the past and that which is occurring in the present. It is simply that which is and that which has been. Please recognize when I use the word truth, that is all I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the mind of God. I'm not talking about the entire reason for the existence of the universe. I'm talking about the events that have taken place in the past and are taking place in the present. That's all. And guess what? That's all the truth is. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Okay? You want to make it more complicated than that, call it something other than truth so as not to confuse people to what truth really is. Truth versus human perception. Okay? Now, I want to ask people to imagine, see these white lines? Imagine these white lines that do not waver as truth. And imagine that the perception that is set against the truth, we're going to take three different individuals. This is individual A, this is individual B, this is individual C. Okay, Their ability to perceive what has occurred and what is occurring is what I would refer to as consciousness. Okay, Consciousness is a being's ability to recognize patterns and meaning with respect to those patterns. Meaning you have an accurate understanding of what's taking place within and around you, or you have an inaccurate understanding of what's taking place in and around you. If your consciousness is high, meaning it's at a high frequency, okay, that means you're going to have more of an ability to understand and recognize the patterns. If your consciousness is low, you're at a low frequency, you're going to see the pattern less. You're not going to accurately perceive. So I liken this to a waveform. In simple, you know, physics, a wave, this is a simple sine wave, okay? It has its crest here and its trough here, okay? And then the pattern repeats, goes up to the crest, down to the trough, and, and, and it repeats over again. The distance between the uh, either crests or troughs of the wave is called the wavelength, okay? The longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency. What that means is how frequently is it going to be intercepting the line that represents truth? How frequently is it going to be aligned with this line? which we are calling truth, okay? Now, can everybody just, with that love, with that explanation, understand this simple model and what I'm talking about here? Is that clear? Okay, because it's important. Because this is a low-frequency vibration. It's a low-frequency wave. A wave like this, if it was an audio wave, would produce a low frequency, it would produce a low bass tone, okay? As we go up to a higher frequency, you can see the wavelength is shorter, meaning that it intercepts the line which represents truth much more frequently. We can count them. One, two, three, four, five here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. Okay? So this is a higher frequency vibration. And we go up to an even higher frequency. Let's say person C has this consciousness. They have a higher frequency. Okay? 
and they're intercepting the, the uh, line that represents truth much more frequency. I won't count those out because there's a lot of them, okay? The higher the frequency, the more in tune with truth we are. What would happen if this frequency became infinitely high? What would it become? It would be indistinguishable from a line. And therefore, someone would be aligned to that which is. The higher the level of consciousness or frequency, which is their perception of reality being accurate, okay, not wavering as much from the truth, because it's hitting it in more places. We would, we would basically, this wave would turn into a line at some point, the higher the frequency went. Think about this in sound, right? You hear a low bass tone, it's like, then it goes up, and it would go eventually outside the range of human hearing because the frequency went so high. Same concept here. The higher the, 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 higher the um, frequency, the higher the perception of reality, the quality of the perception is going to be. Okay? The concept to keep in mind here is perception is not reality. It's the filter we see reality through. What the human being's work is to do is to align their perception to the reality which exists, which is truth. We need to set aside what we want the truth to be and look at what it is. What it is is altogether different than what we want it to be. But until we recognize what it is, we're, we're not even in a position to make an accurate diagnosis of what's going on and therefore create what we want it to be. So I'm going to give the first quote here. It comes from a gentleman I, I personally greatly respect. How many people are familiar with Travis Walton by a show of hands? Hardly anybody in the room. Wow, two people. Amazing. And I know Barb is in the back because we've met him personally. I spoke with this gentleman at a conference last year in 2012. And I just want to say, I just think he's a totally genuine individual. I don't care what anybody thinks of me saying that, okay? I believe him. Do I know factually that what he claims happened to him did? No, I do not. But I believe what he is saying for a reason. When I am around somebody, especially for any length of time, I think I can, my intuition is good that I can get a feel for their heart, okay? And when he's telling you stuff, it's very consistent. And in his book, he asks people, you need to listen to my whole story, suspend your disbelief for a minute, and then do your research, and then make a judgment call. Do you want to believe me? Do you think I'm telling you the truth? Do you think I'm lying to you? And then make up your own mind, okay? And what Tra who Travis Walton is, he was uh, claims that he was an abductee, that he was taken uh, on board uh, an extraterrestrial craft at a point in his life. He disappeared for days. They were out looking for him, and his best friends were accused of murdering him. And he shows up five days later in, like, deplorable conditions, uh, you know, out on a country road someplace. Um, but anyway, again, I spoke with him back in 2012. I just bumped into him again. We were just at a conference. I'm bringing this up for a reason. We were just at a conference in Philadelphia where he spoke. And... Uh, this quote, I feel, I, I would start, if I was going to quote somebody, I was going to make this like the first quote in the presentation today. Travis Walton says in his, in his book, which is called Fire in the Sky, he said, I have come to realize that the biggest problem anywhere in the world, the biggest problem anywhere in the world, is that people's perceptions of reality are compulsively filtered through the screening mesh of what they want and do not want to be true. Now, when I read that in his book, I got chills up and down my spine. Because I said, this meshes exactly with what I'm talking about in my section, in my presentation called Truth Versus Perception. And he's encapsulating it in a sentence perfectly. All right? We want things to be true. That doesn't make it so. That's not what makes truth the way that it is. What makes truth is the way that it is, is what behaviors were taken and what is the actual effect in the manifested world. That's how things are. Okay? It doesn't matter how we want them to be. They may be a completely different way right now than we want them to be. And I would say for the people in this room, they are a completely different way than we want them to be. 
But most people in the world think, they, they kind of believe that they're the arbiter of truth. And that's a bad place to be in. That's a very, very low level of consciousness. To think that if I don't believe that it's this way, it's not this way. Many people are trapped in that state of mind. 